Hi, welcome to Real Magic Review. Uh, this is a discussion, well I call it a discussion, it's not much of a discussion because it's just me, but it will hopefully open one. And this is as a result of a question I got yesterday on my comments. Uh, before I carry on, like, subscribe, go and look at Car Magic Course, that'll be lovely, etc. Uh, great. So, uh, it's a great question and I can talk endlessly about it and I don't have all the answers but I do have an opinion and I'd love to, uh, to get some comments on this and maybe I'll do a live video to follow up this one. So it comes from Joseph on the comments. Uh, Joseph Walker, Steve, I have a question for you. How much of an advantage does a complicated, maybe technically difficult routine have over a simple routine? And if there's no advantage, what's the point? Absolutely. Uh, well, let me carry on. Uh, put this question in some context. I had my second shift at work today, and at the end, I did a couple of really basic tricks on my supervisor. I did Dr. Daly's last trick, uh, and then a simple card glimpse and mind read, uh, both of which I do quite often. Uh, now they've just used the most basic slides. I could have done something like Paul Harris's reset maybe or some other crazy slight of hand trick, but I don't think it would have had as big a reaction on the spectator. He just put a card in my hand, he never touched it, just tapped it with a knife and it was a different card. Absolutely. Uh, love this. Consider also the trick of simply vanishing a coin compared to a more difficult spellbound routine, which would have a bigger effect on the spectator. Probably a simple coin vanish, right? So if we can do such miracles with basic slights and methods, when, if ever, and why does it become more worth, make it more complicated, sorry, I got that wrong, uh, and risky with harder slights or, or taking more effort in preparation, leaving aside the scenario of using more complicated methods to fool people who already know the simple methods, so fooling magicians, etc. Oh, that made sense, so I sort of slaughtered that a little bit. Uh, I guess what the difference boils down to is, are more difficult tricks worth it, and do the spectators even care uh, any more than simple tricks. Right, I love this. I'm going to just turn that off so it doesn't start going off. Um, there's so much to talk about here. Is it worth it? A, a little story, and I'll try not to bang on too long about this. I was, I've been a magician for 20 odd years, including street performing and all that kind of stuff. I got to a point where I can go to a close up gig and it's all easy. Okay, there, there's no difficulty for me. Um, and I started getting bored. And a long time ago, I realized I'd stopped learning magic as a hobby. Obviously, I started like that. I got obsessed with the learning of it. And uh, even uh, it was a couple of years ago, not quite a couple of years ago, ago I was in hospital uh, and I got my cards out. I was in Bulgaria and I'd still play with cards and stuff, but I had a Daryl book with me uh, for some reason. I took it with me and thought, well, you never know. I might be in a situation where I've got nothing to do. Uh, and I was. I was stuck in a horrendous hospital. Uh, and I'll put a, a, link, a link to the the blog underneath actually on my other channel um, and I, I started playing again and then I got two messages one from Richard McDougall one from uh, Michael Vincent both of them saying hey we can see because I was putting stuff on Facebook see you're having a hard time wanting to get your cards out and I got really inspired again and then I by the time I got home I was a hobbyist again I was obviously still a professional but then I was a hobbyist and I realized that I just love learning it I loved learning magic regardless of the taking it out to perform and doing stuff on stage and 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 that then inspired me to to look at my performance more and it, it and then that's how this channel came about you know and to, I want to say I don't want to get in that situation again I want to give myself reason um, to just learn magic you know without that reason being to take it out and necessarily perform it for lay people and etc so so that kind of answers the question a little bit. And this is going to be a, maybe a slightly longer video. So, but do stay to the end because I don't think it's, it, it, it's, it sparks the discussion. I'm not saying I'm right about all of this. So the, the, first of all, is the thing about joy. You just enjoy them. Why do we do anything? Why do we perform? What do we get from it? Why, why do we do the Dr. Daily trick that gets the amazing reaction? Why do we do the reset trick that might not? Well... It, there's something different than, I think, just the reaction. Now, of course, in a professional situation, there isn't. It's just about the reaction. But I actually think there's something very personal going on here. And sometimes you might enjoy performing a trick that may not get a strong reaction because you just love the trick. It gives you a feeling of, of enjoyment performing it. Now, it, you know, theory-wise, we have to then follow that up with a with a belter <laughs> you know if you're going to do a table yeah do your thing because I, I think that if it's good magic it's good magic even though it might not get a wow it might still get that's really nice and as long as you you think about where you're going and you're routining and stuff that's fine so that in part answers that uh, I think yes it is worth it for your own personal 
thing because don't forget I always say your personal joy is then it carries through to your performance so if you're performing for yourself completely that's wrong if you're performing just for them I think that's almost just as wrong there's got to be something in you that that drives you and people will feel it they really feel that and, and that's contagious that joy and uh, and that's why I put difficult stuff into my close-up routine sometimes I don't have to but I do that because I, I, they can feel that my joy in it and if it goes wrong it goes wrong and then there's a different kind of entertainment in that sometimes as well as long as I don't expose anything but the other thing is that hard is a very you know you talk about a difficult slice but that's only one aspect of magic being difficult I I at the moment are way more comfortable doing difficult slides because they're no longer difficult for me because I practice them so much than if I do a trick that requires quite a lot of process, like Mihai's trick in, in the, the book I talked about yesterday, um, I always want to call it crimes and misdemeanors, <laughs> plots and methods. Um, I feel really nervous performing that stuff. And in a way, it's not self-working, of course. But, you know, there's, there's a couple of moves, but moves that I find very easy. But because there is quite a lot of process, I, to, to me, there's a lot of area for things going wrong. And you know that feeling when you've done all the process and the last thing is they've just got to count the cards down? I get so nervous because I feel like, wow, that's out of my control. That, like, that last card they turn over has got to be their card. Man, it terrifies me. And the same way mentalism does. I did fourth dimensional telepathy on stage for a long time. I'm starting to do it again, but I had a real block. For me, I found the moves easy in the routine, but it was all based on one moment. And I found that terrifying because it felt like it was in my head that I had to control my scripting and all that rather than my hands. I'm quite kinesthetic. I feel comfortable with, with doing a difficult slide. I feel like it's in my control. So for someone like me that spent so many years with slides, I actually find it harder to do a non slight related trick. So, so it, you know, which is the more difficult? For me, it's almost self-working now for me to do a one-handed top arm. I'm not being big -headed. I've just done this so many times that it's, it's easy for me. Which, so it's, I suppose it is what is, what is hard. You know, it, it's, it's a bit of a sort of cliche, I suppose, but it's kind of my thing that I always say is that everything becomes easy once you've practiced it enough. So it's, it's, it's a very personal thing. Dr. Daly's last trick is not an easy trick. It's not an easy trick to do well. I don't think it is. A double left is not an easy thing to do in a convincing way. Um, and also, your a, a top change. You know, the classic thing is, you know, is that your card? No, top change, yeah, it is. To us, it's easy because the mechanics are quite easy and we learn it, but actually, it's not an easy thing to do well. Performance of magic is not an easy thing to do. I find performance of magic harder than the slights. If you can get out and you can perform an easy trick, that in some ways is more difficult than going out and not performing a really difficult trick because with a really difficult trick, you're kind of here and you've done your practice with an easy trick, but to make it entertaining is a different thing. So we're, we're getting into, into more sort of murky waters then as well. Uh, my personal feeling is it's very useful for me to know some slides. The difficulty is just almost a separate thing. If I see a slide and I see the use in it and I see that I really like it, I start learning it. And then I make a decision whether it's difficult or not. But if I want to learn it well, if I want to learn it um, a lot, like something like, well, I saw, I saw someone do a one-handed top palm, right? So you take the cards and you, but to me, that was something I thought, I've got to learn that. Because if I get lost and I lose the card and I go, where is it? And I can sort of cull it to the top. I can top palm it and get it out of a pocket or wallet or anything like that. Um, sorry about exposure, but we are all magicians here. I think we're all good. Um, the same with a slight, you know. You, you, a, slight, a coin slight is not an easy thing to do, and it is very beautiful. We learn it and we spend a lot of time on it, and then we start thinking it's easy. It's not. I think arguably a spellbound routine can sometimes be easier. Uh, so again, it's it all becomes a little bit more murky. The youthfulness in the, in for me as well in learning a lot of slides, which is kind of why I, I, with my car magic course. Oh, sorry about the plug, but it's it's got lots of moves on it because I think if you've got lots of moves, you can get yourself out of trouble. You know, if you lose a card, even in a self-working trick, you can then change the whole trick and cull it and do something else with it. You've got that versatility. Um, and and going on to versatility. I love watching magicians that, that have done the same routine for 10 years and do it beautifully. I just love it. I mean, look at Cardini. I mean, so skilled, but you watch him. He did, he, Cardini did the same 
three minutes for years, you know, or four minutes. Um, and I'm not taking away anything from that. He's my favourite magician. But for me personally as well, I like if I'm working in a room, I like to know that I can get to that table, that maybe a, a load of young people getting drunk that might respond to skill a bit more, or go to that table and do something a lot more gentle and storytelling kind of thing. And, and it gives me that versatility. About skill as well, I think people can feel skill. It's not about you doing skilled things like very flourishy stuff or something that looks very sort of quick or anything like that. It's just something that people can feel. And I, I always think that me and Mihai, um, he sort of thanked me for the video I made yesterday and I, we had a bit of a chat. And he was saying, if you put a skilled magician against a non-skilled magician, there is a difference there. So if someone books someone that isn't skilled but can, knows four really good routines, they're not gonna know any different. It's not gonna matter to them. If they book someone a week later that knows loads of different stuff, they're going to see that. They might not know how it's done. They might not see the skill explicitly, but they can just feel it from that expertise. And I think that's really important. I think that if you want to be a card expert or a coin expert, it's really worth learning a lot because then you've got that versatility. You've got that skill. And what happens is that when you do the easy stuff, you... You kind of flow with it a lot more because you've got the skill to manage it. And I think, you know, something like a Coins Across, if it's done very well, like Al Schneider's Coins Across, it's really beautiful. And that takes a lot of skill, but is it more difficult than a bit of coin banish? At the end of the day, it's very, very personal. I don't see people that don't do loads of slices being less skilled than me. It's a different skill. You know, you watch Danny Dortiz do that thing that I mentioned yesterday when he, he had like Matt King on stage and John Archer and all these people. And he did this incredible routine that was not technically difficult, but it was technically difficult in the way he did it, how relaxed he was. He knew exactly what was going on. He could play with it. He could improvise around it. That's the skill. The end of the day, you've got to do what makes you really, really happy. That's it. It doesn't matter whether that's going to the magic club and showing your mate a trick. It doesn't matter whether that's sitting with music on, reading a book or watching a DVD, learning for the sake of it, learning something you are never going to perform. Okay, that is just as valid than someone learning something they're going to perform for 10,000 people on a stage. I don't care what people say, I don't care whether you're doing it on Britain's Got Talent or you're doing it at home, uh, which what my favourite thing to do is stick some music on, get a book and just practice magic. I think it's so joyous, it's so enjoyable and then yes the performance of it is lovely but if you'd never perform it there's still something it's giving me and it's feeding me and it's giving me that food which I need to, to stay motivated in, in not just in magic but, but in life. And I know it sounds gushy but it is true and if I can give anybody any advice, you know, if you're beginning in magic or not, is do not listen to people that say you should, you should, you should, you shouldn't. You know what? Do what you want. If you're enjoying it, it's doing the job. In the, and and Doctor. And by the way, my when I'm doing close up, I do Doctor Daly's last trick. It gets an amazing reaction. I do more difficult stuff that doesn't get quite as good reaction, but it feeds me. And I always bang in a ring flight, card to wallet, or something that isn't quite as skilled, but it just I know it gets scout reaction because then you've you've ticked all the boxes there. So I know it's a long video, but I, I really would love a discussion about this. And maybe I'll do a live video next week. And, um, and thanks so much for, for that question. And thank you because it just it really got me thinking. It got me and Mihai talking last night. And I think it's an endlessly fascinating subject. And I'm sure you will disagree with a lot of what I say. And that's absolutely fine. Uh, so have a great one. Thanks for that. And take care.